So you know something funny is when you do this YouTube thing for a while, you notice this trend and it, it's you get a whole bunch of emails from some shady folks about trying whatever product they're pushing at the time. And I've noticed over the years that it's always following like a cycle. It's, it'll be like pretty quiet for a while. And then you get a whole bunch of companies asking you to try like their e-bike and then it's quiet. And then they're like, try our robot vacuum. And for the most part, I just ignore them because they're pretty scammy and they're normally pretty crappy stuff. But this last cycle, it was a whole bunch of people want me to try their laser cutters. And one of them was Creality. And you know me, I don't like Creality. I've had their scanners and some of their printers, mostly the Ender 7, which has been the bane of my existence, haunts me to this day. But given they're the most reputable in the bunch that emailed me, I figured I'd give their laser cutter a shot because after trying the H2S, I wanted to kind of see what else is out there that's more dedicated laser cutter versus printer laser combo that's like $2,000. So they sent over their Falcon A1 Pro and I forgot this was even coming. Then one day it just showed up with all these boxes. Today we're gonna try it. Well, that's a lie, I've already tried it. I've already messed around with it because for the most part, as long as it does what it's supposed to, which is cut stuff. Which is cut stuff. And the software doesn't suck. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be easy to use and make sense and just work good. Then I'm happy. And for the most part, I've been pretty happy with this thing. The software, Yes, it's not as polished as the H2S, the bamboo suite, but it does the job. The biggest gripe I have about it is the camera up top when it takes a picture of the uh, material you put in there so you know where to place your cuts. You're not cutting into already cut out spots, which I think is pretty critical to having a laser cutter, is mid at best. Uh, it does give you a picture. It is a good reference, but it's not very precise. The H2S is a pretty high definition camera. It takes a picture when you put your stuff in a location, it pretty much cuts it in that exact location. I did run into is issues here where I thought I was right on the edge of the material I was cutting and it drifted off and then back on, which was annoying, but for the most part, it was good. The auto leveling or the auto auto focus worked pretty good, except for on transparent things. So you have to put a piece of paper in there because I just can't see anything transparent. But for the most part, I was satisfied. It changed my opinion of Creality slightly. This worked and I, I do like it. Are you sure about that? It's $7.99, so it's a bit expensive, but if you need to dedicate a laser cutter that's enclosed like this, this might be for you. Now this fume extractor, this smoke remover, this is $5.99, so that is another additional cost if this is something you want. Now, if you can put this in a location where you can just vent it outside, this is not needed, but I thought this was actually a pretty good product. It's relatively quiet. It kept all the fumes and smoke out of the room, and I was I was relatively, I was pretty happy about this whole experience. And then I got to thinking, what are we gonna do with this thing? And then I had an idea. Do you remember this guy? This is the air cooler that we water cooled forever ago. And back when I made this, I didn't have a laser cutter. I had to make this all by hand and it was very annoying to cut out all these pieces of plexiglass and glue them together. But in the end it worked. And surprisingly, it still holds water. There's none in it now, it's been many years. This is super corroded. But I bet you if I put this on a CPU, it would still work. I wouldn't trust the integrity too much, but might hold water still. And this is kind of what I wanted to try because ever since I made that, I was like, if I had a laser cutter, this would have been way easier. And now that I have two, I figured we'd use the A1 Pro uh, to try this again. Kind of, I didn't want to do the exact same thing because we already did that. So my idea was, let's still try to build a box to see how much easier it is doing it with the laser cutter versus hand. But then I want to try to see how humidity affects an air cooler by going from no humidity to basically water vapor through it from a humidifier. And I want to see if that water in the air, that huge water volume in the air just condenses and doesn't do anything or if it improves performance or reduces it. So that is what we're going to do. And we got to cut our stuff first. So let's see how that works. My thoughts on the uh, the Falcon A1 Pro here have changed dramatically. Problem was when we got to this part, this is slightly larger, so it takes a bit longer to cut. And as soon as I started to cut this, everything seemed fine until it got about, I don't know, halfway through, 80% through. Yeah, it overheated, which is kind of unacceptable for me. I don't know how you make a laser, cu laser cutting machine that when processing parts, 
overheats. Just as a sanity check, put the same material, same part on the Bamboo H2S with the 10 watt laser head, and it was able to process the whole thing at 100% power, two passes, it took about 14 minutes to cut it all, no issues. All right, so we got the build complete. We are sitting here. I've just been letting it run a little bit off camera. We've kind of stabilized right around 73, 74 degrees. Uh, I put a little hydrometer thing up here so you can see the humidity. I believe that's how you, what it is, a hydrometer. Hygrometer. Anyway, humidity uh, display right here. It says it's 37 degrees of the air exiting the cooler. So we're just running air, air in, through the box, air out. Back here, I got a little tiny humidifier. We're gonna turn it on. We'll start low because I don't want to. I don't want to drown everything out and kill this thing. We do need this for the fan shutdown. If it breaks, I guess we'll get a new one. But uh, we'll just turn it up a little bit and see if anything happens to our little, our little temperature line here. And see, watch our humidity and see if our humidity goes up. I, just, I turned it all the way on, I guess. So far, nothing really happening. Still sitting around 72, 73, 74 degrees. I guess we'll let it cook for a little bit as our humidity goes up. It's gone up just a little bit. So we've been humming along here for 33-ish minutes and you can see our humidity is right around 66, 65. It's kind of bouncing in between. Room temperature, I didn't mention this last time. When we were running just air, the room temperature was 20.6 degrees Celsius. This time it's 20.7 degrees Celsius. And our temperatures have dropped quite a bit. We're bouncing around 66, 68, 67 degrees. Whereas before we were up at 73. So with this water vapor being pumped into this cooler, it's our temperatures have gone down quite a bit. And I want to know, what did, did you think? Did you think that was going to happen? Because normally, when you think of hot, humid air, you think of being hotter, humid air being less effective at cooling. But in this situation, we're seeing this water vapor being drawn through this cooler as actually improving performance quite a bit. And I better turn it off because I can see some condensation building up on the fan. Nothing started to drip here. I don't really see anything in the box. I do see a little bit of condensation on top. But before we kill anything, let me, let me shut this baby down. But before we get into our little experiment here, I want to talk about the Falcon A1 Pro. Because when, when I started this video, I was, I was pretty, was pretty high on the hog. I was, I was excited about it. After using it on this project, well, um, I'm not anymore. When I was testing the A1 Pro before this project, I was, you know, cutting some, some shapes out of woods, making boxes, um, stuff like that, running acrylic through it, specifically this green acrylic, running like just circles, trying to fine tune the, the laser cutter to make it cut a little better. And the whole time I was using it to do that, I mean, the laser ran fine, the, uh, the cut was fine, the, the, fume, the fume extractor, it, was, it did a great job. Everything was going swell. However, once I moved to a larger piece of acrylic, and by larger, I mean this square, this front panel, that's when, that's when things started going awry. I mean, I had nothing but overheating problems every time I tried to cut this panel. The sides and top cut fine, maybe just because they were slightly less cutting distance. I mean, this had a circle, that's a big deal, and a perimeter, not just a perimeter. But either way, every time I tried to cut this front fascia, this front panel, it would just overheat and I'd have to wait for it to cool down, and that was annoying. To me, that's that's kind of that's just unacceptable. It's not like I'm cutting some crazy exotic material that has some extremely long laser on time that makes it overheat. This is three millimeter transparent green acrylic. It's it's a drop down item in the software itself. It's just right there. It should be able to cut it without a problem. In my opinion, if you're gonna sell a 20 watt laser cutter, you should have a 20 watt laser in it that has the adequate cooling necessary to run that 20 watt laser at 100% duty cycle as long as I need it to. If I want to cut back and forth 500 times just lines across it, it should do it just fine and never overheat. It's, it's just, it just sucks. And I mean, yeah, you can resume it and be like, who wants to just sit there and babysit this thing as it's trying to cut the shapes that they want. And honestly, I don't really like the idea of 
a diode laser running that close to its thermal maximum. Diode lasers don't like to be hot, and the longer you run them at a high temperature, the, the, the lower their life expecting is gonna be. They're not gonna last as long when you're running them that hot. So for $7.99, the A1, the Falcon A1 Pro that's over there on the floor where it belongs is a hard pass for me. I would not buy that. It's just not worth it. Why would you buy a 20 watt laser for $7.99 that doesn't even cut this shape out without overheating and making you wait? Just boo. Anyway, back to our experiment. Uh, I took the front tube off here because I wanted to see if there's any condensation inside the, uh, the fin stack. I didn't notice anything, so just, just wanted to check that. Now, normally we think of humid air as being less efficient at cooling CPUs or like the CPU heatsink or cooling anything really, and that's because the water vapor is lighter than the nitrogen and oxygen molecules that it displaces, so it's less dense. And less dense air means there's less mass flowing through a heat sink per second, which carries slightly less heat. It makes sense. There's less air mass moving through something. There's less mass to remove that heat. But what's happening here is a little bit different. And if you paid attention to this uh, little gauge here, you probably would have noticed what was going on. Our humidifier, I don't know where it went. I took it away, but our humidifier isn't just putting humidity in the air. It's shooting a fine mist of micro water droplets into the air intake. Those droplets evaporate almost instantly as they enter the airstream. That evaporation absorbs heat itself from the air, reducing the inlet air temperature quite a bit. And you can see it in the numbers. If you're looking closely at this little screen when we were running the, the test, uh, this was obviously on the exhaust side, but still, you can see when this was just fans, the air temperature was around 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we turned on the humidifier and it dropped all the way down to 69 degrees Fahrenheit. That increased delta T allows the CPU cooler to dump that heat energy much more efficiently. It's kind of like having a pre-cooler on our cooler. So now that I have a laser cutter, not the Falcon, we won't be using that anymore, but I still have the bamboo and I have a lot of acrylic left. If you have an idea for what you want to see me do next, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I will get this cleaned up for the next episode of the Fan Showdown, which should be the next video you guys see. So get your submissions in. You can't use a humidifier. I guess we'll put that as a rule, so I don't know. See you next time.